السلام عليكم اعزائي الطلبه طلبه المرحله الثالثه المحاضرات التاليه ستكون للكورس الثاني اسلوب القاء المحاضره سيختلف عن الاسلوب في الكورس الاول راح نتمد الاسلوب student learning procedure بمعنى انه الطالب هو يكون مسؤول عن اعداد وتقديم المحاضره ساشرح طريقه العمل في هذا الاسلوب سيتم ارسال المحاضره الى ممثل المرحله وممثل المرحله سيقوم بتقسيم المحاضره على مجموعه من الطلبه كل مجموعه راح تكون مسؤوله عن موضوع معين في داخل المحاضرة ومن ثم يقوم الطلبة بإلقاء المحاضرة كل حسب المادة المسؤول عنها واتباعا بعد الانتهاء من إلقاء المحاضرة سيفتح باب المناقشة لمجاميع الطلبة الحاضرين في كل الصف ستبدأ المناقشات بين الطلبة وتكون ليس محددة للموضوع التي قام به إلقاء الطالب هذه هي المناقشة الفعالة ستراها بين الطلبة ومسؤول المادة ويكون الأستاذ مشرف على المجموعة كلها ويقوم تنسيق الأسئلة وفي حال عدم مقدرة الطلبة بإجابة سؤال معين سيقوم التدريسي بالتدخل وتوضيح المادة للطلبة عند الانتهاء من إلقاء المحاضرة سيكون هنالك امتحان كويز لجميع الطلبة عدا الطلبة الذين قاموا بإلقاء المحاضرة وستكون عليها هنالك درجة للتقييم لكل طالب يقوم بإلقاء مادته يكون التقييم على أساس أسلوب الإلقاء مدى كفاءته في توصيل المادة العلمية وأسلوب النقاش للمادة المخاط من قبله وهنالك ستكون نقاط تحفيزية للطلبة المشاركين بصورة فعالة في النقاشات عند الانتهاء من المحاضرة سيكون هنالك كويز في نفس المادة أكرر سيكون هنالك كويز في نفس المادة محاضرتنا لهذا اليوم ستكون حول أنتيجين Processing and the presentation. The teaching objective of this lecture is to compare and contrast antigen recognized by the TCR and the PCR. To describe the pathways involved in the processing of endogenous and exogenous antigens. To discuss the self MHC restriction in antigen presenting cells. To compare and contrast presentation of conventional uh, antigen and uh, super antigen. To discuss the role of positive and negative selection in the thymus in generation of self MHC restricted T cells. Can you ask a question in the first question? What is the super antigen? Malasaf, majmua na talab elam yisatay wa lijab alay. بالرغم من السؤال كان واضح والمادة العلمية مغطات ومغطات بصورة واضحة يرجى مراجعة المحاضرات السابقة في الكورس الأول لتعمق في فهم هذه المادة What is the comparison between the BCR and TCR receptor? B cells and T cells recognize different substances as antigen. Could be a soluble or insoluble form. And in a different form. 
the B cells uses the cell surface bind immunoglobulin as a receptor and the specificity of that receptor is the same as the immunoglobulin that is able to secrete after activation. What's the meaning? B cells contain an antibody on their surface. هذا الانتبادي after primary activation by binding to specific uh, molecule which is usually a soluble antigen بس بعد شوية راح نعرف uh, what's the type of uh, soluble antigen after activation second attack for the same antigen there will be a secretory a plasma cells that secrete an immunoglobulin the structural similarity between the surface immunoglobulin and the secreted immunoglobulin was the same and it will recognize the same antigen so B cells recognize the following antigen in a soluble form it could be a protein which could be a both conformational determinant and determinant exposed after denaturation or proteolysis. يعني the protein can يكون هو structure كامل as a polypeptide or changes by digestion by certain enzymes and expression of these molecules, protein molecules on the surface of B cells. It could be a nucleic acid molecules or uh, polysaccharide molecules and to least extent it could be a uh, lipid molecules or it could be a small molecules chemicals we call the haptins what is the haptins the semester in contrast the overwhelming majority of the antigen for the T cells are protein, and this type of protein is insoluble. One. These proteins must be fragmented within the cytoplasm and recognized in association with MHC molecules that are expressed on the surface of all nucleated cells that carry the criteria of antigen presenting cells so it is not in soluble form T cells are grouped functionally according to the classes of MHC molecules that is associated with the peptide fragment of a protein it could be a T helper cells recognize only those peptides associated with the class 2 MHC molecules and it could be a cytotoxic T cells that recognize only those peptides associated with the class 1 molecules. Now how the antigen will be processed and presented on the surface of the antigen presenting cells. Antigen processing and the presentation are a process that occur within a cell that result in the fragmentation or we call the proteolysis of a proteins. Association of these processed proteins fragment with the MHC molecules and then the expression of the peptide MHC molecules at the cell surface where they can be recognized by the T cell receptor on a T cell. However, the path leading to the association of protein fragments with the MHC molecules differed from a class 1 and the class 2 molecules. MHC class 1 molecules present degradation product derived from the intracellular 
proteins within the cytosols. I mean, that is the internal processing within the uh, cytoplasm of the antigen presenting cells. The MHC molecule class 2 presents a fragment derived from an extracellular or we call exogenous proteins that are located in an intracellular compartment. What's the meaning? Here, when there is an antigen on the extracellular fluid, there will be a, a process we call endocytosis of the foreign antigen and entrance of this antigen within the cells and a process will be uh, discussed later on details how the phagolysosome will be formed and then degradation of the antigen into small molecules and after that there will be processing of these molecules on the uh, cell surface in association with MHC class 2 molecules. The MHC class 1 pathway here, all nucleated cells express class 1 MHC molecules, as shown in figure in the next step. Proteins are fragmented in the cytosol by proteosomes or by other proteins that are present in the endosomes. The fragments are then transported across the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum by a transporter proteins. Synthesis and assembly of the class 1 heavy chain and beta 2 microglobulins occur within the endoplasmic reticulum. Within the endoplasmic reticulum, the MHC class 1 heavy chain, the beta 2 microglobulins and the peptide form a stable complex that is transported to the cell surface. Uh, see MHC class 2 pathways. Whereas all nucleated cells express a class 1 MHC molecules, only a limited group of cells express class 2 MHC molecules, which include the antigen presenting cells. The principal antigen presenting cells are macrophages, dendritic cells, Langerhans cells, and B cells. The expression of a uh, class 2 MHC molecules is either constitutive or inducible. Constitutive is yani, a part of the constituent of the cells. Inducible, inducible when the cells induce to produce these molecules, especially by interferon gamma in the case of macrophage. Uh, here uh, we mean that the gamma interferon will uh, trigger the macrophage to express MHC class 2 molecules on their surface. As shown in this figure, exogenous proteins taken by the endocytosis and are fragmented by proteins within the endosomes. The alpha and bat 
data chain of MHC class 2 molecules along with the invariant chains are synthesized, assembled in the endoplasmic reticulum, and then transported through the Golgi apparatus and the trans-Golgi apparatus to reach the endosome, where the invariant chains is digested and the peptide fragment from the exogenous proteins are able to be associated with MHC molecules, class 2, which are uh, finally uh, transported to the cell surface. Now, what is the important aspects of antigen processing? What is their importance? One way of rationalizing the development of two different pathways is that each ultimately stimulates the population of T cells that is most effective in eliminating that type of antigen, whether T helper cells or cytotoxic T cells. The best examples for these two categories, we start with viruses. The viruses replicate within the nucleate cells in the cytosols and produce endogenous antigens that can associate it with a class 1 MHC molecules. By killing these cells infected with the viruses, the cytotoxic T cells help to control the spread of viruses. On the other hand, bacteria mainly reside and replicate extracellularly. By being taken up and defragmented inside the cells as exogenous antigens that can associate it with MHC class 2 molecules, with the extracellular antigen. Now the role of helper T cells can be activated to assist B cells to make antibodies against bacteria, which limits the growth of these organisms. However, not all types of bacteria associated with MHC class 2 molecules. Some bacteria grow intracellularly inside the vesicles of the cells like macrophage. An inflammatory T helper 1 cells help to activate macrophage to kill the intracellular bacteria. The best example of this type of bacteria is mycobacterium tuberculosis. Sometimes a fragment of self as well as, as, well as non-self proteins associated with MHC molecules of both classes and are expressed at the cell surface. Which protein fragment bind is the function of the chemical nature of the groove for that specific MHC molecules. Now, what is the self-MHC restriction? As you know, all our body contains self-antigen. And the rule of T cells is to discriminate between self and non-self molecules. The self molecules will be recognized as self cells and the foreign molecules, it will be recognized as foreign cells and it will be dealt with In order for the T cells to recognize and respond to a foreign protein antigen, it must recognize that MHC molecule on the presenting cells as a self MHC molecules. And this is termed as a self MHC restriction. Helper T cells recognize antigen in the context of the MHC class 2 molecules. Cytotoxic T cells recognize antigen in the context of the class 1 cell cells. And this process whereby T cells become restricted to recognize self MHC molecules occurs within the thymus. So, 
here is the role of thymic education for the T cells to recognize self and non self antigens. Now we will talk about the antigen presenting cells. The three main types of antigen presenting cells are the dendritic cells, macrophage, and B cells. Although other cells that express MNC class 2 molecules, like epithelial, thymic epithelial cells, can act as antigen presenting cells in some cases. Dendritic cells, which are found in the skin and other tissues, ingest antigen by pinocytosis and they transport antigen to the lymph node and spleen. In these areas, they are found predominantly in the T cell area. Dendritic cells are the most effective antigen presenting cells and can present antigen to the naive T cells. Furthermore, they can present internalized antigen in association with either class 1 or class 2 MLC molecules. Here we call the cross presentation. Although the predominant pathway for internalized antigen is the MSC class 2 pathways. The second type of antigen presenting cells is the microphages, which is derived from the monocyte. These cells ingest antigen by phagocytosis or pinocytosis. Macrophages are not as effective in presenting antigen to naive T cells, but they are very good in activating newer T cells. The third type of antigen presenting cells is the B cells. B cells bind antigen by their surface immunoglobulin and ingest antigen by pinocytosis. As the same mechanism as dendritic cells. Like microphage, these cells are not as effective as dendritic cells in presenting antigen to naive T cells. B cells are very effective in presenting antigen to the memory cells, especially when the antigen concentration is low because surface immunoglobulin on the B cells by antigen with very high affinity. I had asked at the course that we can define super antigens. Some students did not agree in the answer. لذلك يرجى مراجعة المحاضرة السابقة للمزيد من الفهم حول what is the super antigen and its relation to certain types of bacteria. Super antigens are antigens that can polyclonally activate these cells to produce large quantities of cytokines that can have a pathological effect. هنا المعنى بأنه uh, there is no specific uh, binding through the MHC molecules. These antigens must be presented to T cells in association with MHC class 2 molecules, but the antigen does not need to be processed. So there will be a direct activation. There will be no processing of the type of antigen. In the case of super antigen, the intact protein binds to MHC class molecules and to one or more of the variable beta regions of the T cell receptor. The antigen is not bound to a peptide binding groove on the MHC molecules or to the antigen binding site of the T cell receptor. Thus, any T cell that uses a particular variable beta in its TCR will be activated by the super antigens, resulting in the activation of large number of T cells, about 25% of T cells. Each super antigens 
will bind to a different set of beta variable regions. Now, what is the thymic education? What the helper and cytotoxic T cells are self MHC restricted. In addition, T cells do not normally recognize self antigen. How are self MHC restricted T cells generated? And why are self reacting T cells do not produce? This is the role of the thymus in positive and negative selection process. Random VDJ rearrangement in T cells should be expected to generate some T cells that can recognize non self MHC and some T cells that can recognize self antigens. Here, it is the role of the thymus to ensure that the only T cells that get to the periphery are the self MHC restricted and unable to react with self antigens. So this is what we call the thymus selection. So functional T cells in the periphery have to recognize foreign antigen associated with self MHC because antigen presenting cells or target cells present antigen associated with self MHC molecules as foreign substance. However, an individual does not need functional T cells in the periphery that recognizes antigens self or foreign associated with foreign MHC. An individual especially does not want functional T cells in the periphery that can recognize self antigens associated with the self MHC because they can lead to damage for healthy normal tissue and may lead to development of some sort of autoimmune diseases. It will be explained in the next lectures. As a result of random VDJ recombination events occurring in immature T cells within the thymus, the TCR of all specificities are produced. Because of this type of uh, various combination between the V, D, and J regions. Process in the thymus determine which TCR specificities are retained. There are two essential steps and sequential steps are present in this figure. And this is called the positive and negative selection. First, T cells with the ability to bind to self MHC molecules expressed by the cortical thymic epithelial cells are retained. And this is known as positive selection. Those that do not bind undergoes a process of apoptosis and the result is the cell death. Thus, T cells having the TCR that recognize self MHC molecules will survive. This is what we call the positive selection. The next steps, T cells with the ability to bind to self MHC molecules associated with self molecules expressed by the thymic epithelial cells dendritic cells and macrophages are killed and this is because of the reaction to the cell cells this is a process we called a negative selection those that do not bind are retained as a result of these two steps t cells having the tcr that recognize self mhc and foreign antigen 
survive. HD says that survive positive and negative selection in the thymus and is released into the peripheral retina specific TCR receptor. So while positive and negative selection is occurring in the thymus, the immature T cells are also expressing CD4 or CD8 cells antigens on their surface. Initially, the pre-T cells that enter the thymus is the CD4 minus and CD4, CD8 minus. In the thymus, it becomes CD4 positive and CD8 positive and as a positive and, and negative uh, selections uh, proceed as uh, cells become either CD4 positive or CD8 positive cells. The commitment to become either CD4 positive or CD8 positive cells depend on which class of MHC molecules the cells encounter. If a CD4 positive and CD8 positive cells is presented with a class 1 molecules, it will downregulate the CD4 and become a CD8 positive cells. If a cell is presented with MHC class 2 molecules, it will downregulate the CD8 and become CD4 positive cells, and this is called the T helper cells. Now, what is the negative selection in the periphery? It's not in the thymus. Positive and negative selection in the thymus is not 100% efficient a process. In addition, not all self-antigen may be expressed in the thymus. The sum of self-reactive T cells may get to the periphery. Thus, there are additional mechanisms that are designed to eliminate self-reactive T cells in the periphery. And these will be discussed in the section of tolerance lecture. Now, what is about the B cell selection? Since B cells are not MHC restricted, there is no need for positive selection of B cells. However, negative selection, I mean elimination of self-reactive clones of B cells is required. This occurred during B cell development in the bone marrow. However, negative selection of B cells is not a critical as for T cells, since in most instances, B cells require T cell help in order to be activated. Thus, if a self-reactive B cells do not get to the periphery, it will not be activated due to lack of T cell helps. So it is a dependent on the T cells to be activated. And thank you for listening.